with the local enforcer precinct on high alert, Orlock scavengers from the ash waste have run into trouble. Promethium trade through the back gates has been shut down. Big John and his road crew will have none of it. They stage the next shipment with drums of carcasses, feces, and all things disgusting. Big John takes a big dump indeed. The message was clear, and the Rust Belt Rangers assemble to beat out an apology. Welcome back to Miniature Game Montage, Episode 3 of our Necromunda campaign. I hope you've enjoyed the matchup so far, and we look forward to bringing you another in the setting of Acropolis. Today, Anarchy of House Orlock will take on the Rust Belt Rangers of the Enforcers. A quick look at our campaign table shows House Kaldor and the Slave Ogren at 1-0, while House Escher and the Corpse Grinder Cult start 0-1. Let's take a quick look at Anarchy of House Orlock. Big John leads this crew, and he is equipped with a plasma pistol and servo claw. We're going to see more close combat this time around. He also has mesh armor and the skills Iron Stare and Nerves of Steel. Forge is an arms master with arc hammer and mesh. He also has Iron Stare and Nerves of Steel. Juice is another arms master with combat shotgun. He wears mesh armor and has the skills Bullet Lord and Shotgun Savant. Dusty is the specialist, toting a plasma gun and mesh. Reb, Tito, and Saul are all gunners with auto guns and mesh. Chip is the sole greenhorn with a step gun and flak. In total, 995 credits for this crew. Today they will match up against the Rust Belt Rangers led by Logan, a Palanite captain. He's running with a concussion carbine and has the skill Fast Shot. Talos, a recommended name from a coffee supporter, is a sergeant with sniper rifle and Fast Shot. Boss Hog is a subjugator sergeant with grenade launcher and crack. He also has Fast Shot. Mahoney, Dragnet, and Decker are all patrolmen with enforcer bolt guns, and Boomer is a patrolman with an enforcer shotgun. In total, 990 credits for this crew of seven. The scenario today is Standoff, a classic game of Necromunda. All fighters will be available. Tactics cards are custom too. House Orlock takes Showboating, which gives them an additional charge under certain criteria and sees the initiative. The Rangers take Shock and Awe, giving D3 plus one fighters the fearsome skill for the round and lucky shot. Deployment will be standard. The objective is a simple one to take out the other gang. You're awarded 3 points for the leader, 2 points for a champion, and 1 for any other fighter. The battle ends when only one gang has fighters left on the battlefield. We're going to be fighting on our new skirmish mat today. This video is not sponsored, but I really enjoy their mats. This is their new 3x3 Desolate Dunes mat. Be sure to check them out with the link in the description after the video. They watch our videos and will take 10% off your order with the code Miniature Game Montage. Let's gear up for turn one and the opening game for the Enforcers and the House of Iron. And we dive right into turn one priority rolls. The Enforcers are rolling up the black dice here. We do switch these, so moving forward, the Enforcers will be rolling yellow dice. Takes us a few times to determine priority, but the Enforcers are going to come away with turn one priority. The sniper Talos is going to take aim at Reb, and he is going to get a long range modifier being outside of 24 inches, getting a plus one, taking this down to a three, partial cover offsets that, so needs a four in order to hit, and that long rifle fires. That is going to get a hit, this is strength four against toughness three, he goes down pinned, and it will be threes in order to wound. That is going to cause a wound. A save comes out with Mesh needing a 6-up. And with that failed armor save, that 6 to wound will kick off Rending, adding one more damage. Two injury dice come out, and he goes out of action on the opening activation. And this was actually Saul, not Reb. We're still learning a few of the new names. A 55 will be a spinal injury. Nearby Dusty has a cool of 7, and he is not going to get that. He is going to break, and he is going to move 2d6, running for cover. Using fast shot, Talos is going to fire again. This time he is targeting Reb. Reb is in full cover, however, and this is going to require 6s in order to hit. That shot is going to miss, and ammo check will be required, needing a 4+. Plus. And that's good. 
First activation for House Orlock. We've got Chip. He is going to move forward with two moves. And then flipping back to the Enforcers, Boomer leads the way with that Enforcer shotgun moving twice. Over for House Orlock, the Arms Master Forge will use both actions to move. Dragnet follows up behind Boomer using two actions to move. On the left flank, Tito is going to use both of his actions to move forward, and that is going to get a reaction from the Enforcers as the Captain Logan, he moves with his first action. His second is going to be to fire that Concussion Carbine, and he's going to fire at the terrain here, just going to clip Tito. Ballistic skill of four, that is required to hit, and that is going to hit Tito. He is going to go down pinned. Will he get knocked back? The answer is no. Strength three against his toughness of three will require a four in order to wound. That will not wound. Big John, not liking those template weapons on that side of the field, uses both actions to move. And we've got Decker on the move here for the Enforcers, using both of his actions to move as well. Reb does the same for House Orlock, continuing to get into full cover. And we have Boss Hog. He is going to use his first action to move. And his second, he is going to fire a frag grenade. Once again, targeting that spot on the ground. And this will be able to hit Tito if he does connect with the shot. And he needs fours in order to hit. That shot is going to miss. We're going to roll out a D6 and a scatter die. And that is going to scatter via the small arrow, four inches, connect the terrain, and that means it is going to connect with Tito as well. Does he get knocked back? Rolling to beat his strength, which is three, and he will be knocked back. This will cause extra damage as he is going to come into contact. Four is required to wound at strength three, toughness three. And mesh armor is a five up save. That is good. Tito avoids the damage, and we move back over to the next Arms Master, which is Juice. He is going to move. And then we've got Mahoney for the Enforcers. He makes a dash across the middle using both actions to move. Turn one action comes to a close, and we saw some firepower right off the bat as Talos was able to take down Saul with that long rifle. We are going to roll up for Dusty, who needs to recover from being broken, and he is getting some nearby support from the Arms Master Juice. Dusty has a base cool of 7. Getting that assist nearby, that is going to be good. He will recover for turn 2, which is coming up next. And we've got priority rolls for turn 2. The Enforcers are going to take it again. And Boomer leads the way for the Enforcers as he moves up, and he's going to fire that shotgun with the template. This is Scattershot mode, and he is going to connect with both of these fighters. They are going to go down pinned. The Arms Master Forge is going to roll a cool check to avoid being pinned. That is Nerves of Steel. That is passed. Ship will go down pinned, however. We roll for Scattershot, which is D6 hits. And first rolling up for Chip, he's going to take two. And this is strength two against this toughness of three. Fives are needed to wound. There are no wounds. We're then going to roll up four forge, and he will take three. Strength two, toughness three. Fives, once again, needed to wound. And it's a triple. That's three sixes, three wounds going on to him. Mesh armor, he's going to block two of these. Forge escapes with just one wound. Next, we have a group activation from House Orlock. Chip narrowly missing those shots will activate first as he gets to his feet, points that stub gun at Boomer. He is in partial cover, and he has a ballistic skill of five, so he's going to need sixes to hit. He lets loose with the stub gun, and he is just going to narrowly miss with a five. Second part of this group activation goes to Forge, and he is just going to be out of range here. He rolls up a 2 on his D3, but even if he would have maximized that roll, he would have been able to get into versatile range, but he's going to check up just a little over an inch away from Boomer. 
The Enforcers are going to take the next turn with Talos. He is once again targeting Reb, who is in full cover. He has now moved within short range of this weapon, so his base of four, a full cover shot takes that to a six. And that shot is going to miss. He is going to use a fast shot, his skill, to take another shot. And that shot is going to miss as well. He is going to have to take an ammo check here on a 4+. plus That has failed, and that weapon jams. Back to the House of Iron, Tito gets to his feet and retreats back. And then Boss Hog is going to move into cover, and he is going to shoot that grenade launcher again. It's a frag grenade, and this one is going down at Dusty. Dusty just recovered in the last turn, and rolling up, he just needs a 4 in order to hit. That shot is going to miss. We are going to d6 and scatter, and that shot is going off the table. Back over for House Orlock, Big John uses both of his actions to move up behind Chip. And over to the Enforcers, Dragnet is going to attempt to shoot at Forge. Has to pass a cool check due to Iron Stare as he is within his line of sight. And he is a cool check of 7. 2d6 come out, that shot is not going to happen. He's going to use that second activation to retreat back. Dusty is going to use both of his actions to reposition here, getting into full cover while moving up the board, trying to make that plasma gun a little more effective. The enforcers elect to move up Officer Mahoney as he moves into cover, and he is going to take a shot at Rev with that enforcer bolt gun. Normally hitting on a 4, short range goes to a 3, full cover takes this to a 5. So shots come out, that is going to connect, and ammo check will be required. I accidentally roll that firepower dice again. Ammo check's required, needing a 4-up, that has failed, so Mahoney will be out of ammo. He goes down pinned, will take an initiative check on a 3+, plus due to the railing. That is passed, so he will not fall. Strength 4 on that bolter, uh, against toughness 3, there's no wound, needing 3s. Juice, having assisted Dusty, uses both actions to move. And then we've got Logan, who moves up for the Enforcers. The Captain, he is going to fire that Concussion Carbine again at the terrain. It is just going to clip Tito again. Needing force, that shot is going to miss. D6 and a scatter is coming out. And that one is going to hit a piece of terrain. That piping right there, that is still going to clip Tito. So he is going to go down pinned. Does he get knocked back? He does. Tito will slam into the wall, causing extra damage, and there's going to be no wound. The Enforcer's using Lucky Shot here to re-roll this wound roll, looking to get that extra damage, and it does not convert. Up top in the center of the board, Reb gets back to his feet with his first action, and he fires the auto gun. He needs sixes here due to full cover. The shot is going to miss, ammo check is required, and a four is needed. That is good. We've then got Decker who moves on to the top level with both of his moves. And that brings turn two to a close. Both sides jockeying for position. We are going to see some action on the right side as the House Orlock is going to play Seize the Initiative. That is immediately going to get the Arms Master Forge into contact with Boomer. And we'll have to see if the Enforcers can withstand that. Enforcers should have played Shock and Awe here to try to prevent this, but I did miss it. And we are going to see Forge get into contact with Boomer, swinging that massive arc hammer. Two base attacks, plus one for the charge and one for two melee weapons. He will shoot that stub gun as well. And he hits on threes. All but one will convert. And it is strength 6 on that arc hammer against his toughness of 3. 2 is required on that. The stub gun wounds as well. That arc hammer is AP minus 1, taking him to a 6-up save. One of those is blocked, but he's still going to get 3 damage that comes across. And then we roll for the stub gun, needing a 5-up. No AP on that weapon. That fails as well. 4 total damage coming through. Reduces him to 0 wounds and 4 injury dice. Hit the deck. He is going out of action. Rolling up a D66 for Boomer, and he is going to get a 45, which is Grievous. And then we've got that tactics card being played, Showboating. 
This allows Forge to make another charge action and a fight action. If he gets into contact, he rolls up the maximum distance. It's going to carry him eight inches and into contact with Dragnet. And he is going to get to swing that massive arc hammer again and shoot that stub gun. There will be four more attacks coming across, hitting on threes. The arc hammer misses on all of these. The stub gun still connects. Strength 3, Toughness 3 requires a 4 in order to wound. That is going to wound. 5 up save being taken by Dragnet. And that is going to fail. 1 damage coming across reduces him down to 0 wounds. He goes down with a serious injury and gets the coup de grace. A D66 being rolled up for Dragnet. And he is going to get a 22 which is out cold, he will have time to recover. We've then got a frag grenade shot coming from Boss Hog as he is targeting the terrain there next to Dusty. This is just going to require a 4 in order to hit. And that shot is going to hit. Dusty will go down pinned. Does he get knocked back looking for a 3 or higher? He will not. Strength 3, Toughness 3, 4s are needed to wound. There is no wound again. We have then got another shot coming from Boss Hog with that frag grenade. He fires that down again, just clipping the base. That is going to miss. D6 and a scatter being rolled, and that is going to hit the terrain right beside Dusty. He will go down pinned. We do roll up to see if he is knocked back, needing a 3 or higher. He is not knocked back. We then roll up to wound, needing 4s. Once again, strength 3, toughness 3. That will do a wound. Mesh Armor has a 5-up save. That is no good, so an injury die will be rolled out for Dusty, and he goes down with a serious injury. Over for Anarchy, Reb decides to take a shot at Decker on top here. He's going to aim first. That is going to negate the partial cover that he is receiving. So just looking for that base of 4, I believe he may be just outside of 8 inches. But that shot is going to hit regardless. An ammo check is required, and a 4-up is needed. And that is going to be passed. So strength three against toughness three. Force required a wound. He is going to get a wound. Decker not close enough to have to take an initiative check, but he will go down pinned. The armor save is going to fail. Just a five being needed. And an injury dice rolled out for him. He goes down with a serious injury. Logan, the Palanite captain, is going to respond. He's going to fire that Concussion Carbine up at Reb. He's going to target the terrain here right in front of him. And that is going to require just a 4 in order to hit. That Concussion Carbine lets loose. And that shot is going to miss. We are going to roll a D6 and a Scatter. And that one is going to fall off down to the ground unaffected. Now Logan does have a fast shot, so he is going to try this shot again with his second action. And again, requiring force in order to hit, that is going to be good. Ammo check is required, and that is going to fail. So that weapon will be out of ammo. Reb does go down pinned, and he is concussed. He is also going to be knocked back, but he is still going to be able to grab onto this railing. We'll take an initiative check for him. He's got a base of four. The concussion takes it to a six, but the railing makes it a five. He is okay. He will not fall. Strength 3 against Toughness 3 requires a 4 to wound, and there's no wound. Back to Anarchy, we've got Tito, who is going to stand and move forward now that both of those template weapons have fired. And then we've got Talos reloading his sniper rifle on a 4+, plus. that is good. And then he is going to use his second action to move up to the top. Back to House Orlock, we've got Dusty, who is just going to make a crawl maneuver. And then up here, we've just got a pass coming from Decker down with a serious injury. The Arms Master Juice is going to use both of his actions to move, getting into cover. Mahoney down at the bottom is going to attempt to reload that Enforcer Bolter. He fails on the first one, he's going to try that again, needing a 4+, plus, and that is successful. Back on the Orlock right flank, we've got Chip using both of his actions to move, but we've got Big John following up behind him using the Greenhorn as a screen. Turn three comes to a close. Both sides are taking serious injuries. Fighters are going down. 
blast weapons over on the Enforcer right flank, holding down that objective, but House Orlock is securing the center and the left side of the board. House Orlock not able to bottle right now. Dusty is going to roll recovery. He will stay down with a serious injury. He will also roll for Decker up top, and he is going to roll back over with a flesh wound. We do need to take a bottle check for the enforcers. This should be done before recovery rolls, but we still counted them as they were, and that bottle check is good. Priority rolls for turn three come out. The enforcers have it again. This time, the enforcers are acting quickly with a group activation from Logan and Boss Hog. Logan is going to fire, or he's actually going to try to reload first. That is successful on a four plus. He is then going to fire that concussion carbine once again, clipping Tito and this time clipping the Arms Master Juice. This is just going to require a four up to hit. That is going to be good. We roll out the firepower dice as well. That is fine. Both of those fighters will go down pinned, and now we need to roll to see if they are knocked back. First, rolling up for Tito. He will be knocked back, but he is going to be actually into the terrain here before he goes pinned. And then we roll up for Juice, needing a three plus, and he is going to be knocked back as well into the terrain, causing one extra damage. All right, and fours will be needed to wound. Strength three, toughness three. Wound roll comes out. That is successful. AP one takes this to a six up save. That is going to be good for Tito. And then once again for Juice, needing a four in order to wound. That is going to wound. And a six up save as he also is wearing mesh. It's required AP minus one. And that is going to fail. So that is going to be two damage onto Tito with that knockback. That reduces him down to zero wounds, and he goes down with a serious injury. Cool test by nearby Tito is passed, and the second part of this group activation is Boss Hog firing that frag grenade down, this time targeting the boxes and clipping Big John as well as Chip, and that shot is going to hit. Knockback rolls being taken first on Chip, that is good. And then for Big John, he will not be knocked back. Both of these fighters will go down pinned, and Strength 3, Toughness 3 requires fours in order to wound. Chip takes a wound, and a 6-up Flak Armor save is what he needs. He does not get it, so an injury die will be rolled out for him. It is a flesh wound. We then roll up to wound for Big John. And Big John has a toughness of three as well, so once again, fours are needed. That is going to wound. Mesh Armor takes this to a five-up save for him. And that save is going to be failed. He will take one wound and still has two remaining. House Orlock has weaved themselves into a tight spot here as Boss Hog is going to fire another frag grenade. Targeting the terrain there in front of these guys, and he's going to roll up with a four to see if he can hit. That is going to hit. Once again, rolling to see if it knocks these guys back. We were checking the template here to make sure it was still going to connect with these guys. It will. And rolling for that knockback onto Chip. That is going to be successful. He'll be knocked back another inch. And then rolling another knockback onto Big John. That will be successful. He'll be knocked back as well. Now rolling to wound, and Chip does have a flesh wound, so he will require threes. That is going to be successful. A six up flak armor save will be taken. And that save will be no good. Another injury die will be rolled out for Chip, and he goes down with a serious injury. Big John owes us a cool check, but first we're going to see if he gets wounded. And once again, we will need C4s force here to wound. There will be no wound. Cool check needing a 5+, plus due to Chip going down with a serious injury, and he gets a 5. He's good. Anarchy doing their best to weather the storm here. Tito gets to his feet. He is going to lend an assist to the Arms Master. We've then got a shot coming down from Talos as he targets Forge. Normally hits on four. Full cover will take this to a six. And that shot is going to miss. Fast shot allowing him to fire that weapon again. And he will get a hit this time. Iron Stair not coming into effect here as he is not in his line of sight. 
We are going to roll to avoid pinning, however, for Nerves of Steel. That fails, and he goes down pinned. Strength 4 versus Toughness 3. This is going to require a 3 to wound. That will do a wound. Mesh Armor carries a 5-up save. AP 1 takes it to a 6. That fails. That reduces him to 0 wounds, and an Injury Die will be rolled out here for Forge. This could be huge, and it is a Flesh Wound. We've then got Reb lining up shots at Mahoney with that auto gun. He is going to aim down to a 3, but the cover is going to take that back up to a 4. Just giving partial cover on this shot, it's going to miss. Mahoney is then going to use both of his actions to move, and he is getting behind cover, hoping to get close to someone on the next turn to take them out of action. Chip activates next for House Orlock and just crawls closer to Big John. Decker is going to get to his feet. He is going to fire down at Reb with that Enforcer Bolter. Normally hits on a 4. Full cover takes this to a 6, but he is within 12, so getting that plus 1 modifier. That shot is going to hit. Ammo check will be required, and the gun does run out of ammo. Strength 4, Toughness 3 requires 3s in order to wound. We're first going to take an initiative check on that 3. He is going to be good from the railing, so he will not fall. And now we will roll up to wound at strength four versus toughness three. That is going to do a wound. AP minus one takes this mesh armor to a six. That is failed. And an injury die will be rolled out here as he is reduced to zero wounds. And two damage on this weapon leads to a serious injury. We've then got Big John who gets to his feet, fires the plasma pistol targeting Mahoney. Normally hits on a three, partial cover taking this to a four. That shot is going to hit. Big John fired this in max mode, and he just needed a 2 to wound at strength 6, and he fails to wound. With the remaining activations, Forge will get to his feet and use an action to move, getting behind cover out of line of sight. And then the Arms Master Juice is going to pass along with Dusty, who is down with a serious injury. And that brings turn 4 to a close. House Orlock has fighters down all over the place. Lots of serious injuries taking place, and the House of Iron holding on by a thread. We owe some bottle checks, starting with the Enforcers, and anything but a 6 to maintain their stability. And they roll up a 6. The Enforcers are going to bottle. This could be the shot in the arm that House Orlock was looking for. They roll up a 5 on their bottle test, which is going to be good. The Rule of Iron giving them a plus 2 modifier to that. Now rolling for recovery, we're going to start with Chip here. He is getting an assist from Big John. He's going to roll back over with his second flesh wound. We are then going to roll up for Reb up top. And it looks like he will stay down with a serious injury. We'll roll up for Dusty underneath. And he is going to stay down with a serious injury. Back on the other side, we have the Arms Master. Rolling up two for him, he's getting an assist from Tito. He stays down with a serious injury as well. Priority rolls for turn five come out. House Orlock will be up first. Cool checks are coming around, and Logan, the captain, is going to fail. He had a cool of six, and he is off the board. We've then got Boss Hog, who rolls up. He is going to pass, looking for a six as well. Mahoney is not quite within six inches to get that bubble. He fails his cool check, needing a seven, so Mahoney is off the board. And then rolling up for Decker up here, all alone, needs a 7. He is going to pass. And then a 6 needed from the Sniper Talos. He is going to pass as well, but the Enforcers just lost two fighters. And feeling the momentum swing, Tito moves forward with that auto gun. He is going to take a shot at Boss Hog. He does not quite get within 8 inches to get his short range modifier. He's still going to be hitting on a 4 here, however. That shot is going to hit. Boss Hog is going to go down pinned. It is going to wound as well on that six. Boss Hog has a four up save, which is failed, and he is going to take one wound. Talos will look to retaliate as he swings the sniper rifle to the right, and he is going to target Tito. Tito is in full cover from those ruins, and that will take his four to a six. That shot is going to miss. Ammo check is required. That weapon runs out of ammo. The reload attempt fails, and we move back to Anarchy as Big John is going to use both of his actions to move. 
trying to lend an assist to Dusty with that plasma gun. Boss Hog pops back to his feet and he is going to target Tito. He loads a crack grenade into the grenade launcher and he is going to fire needing a four that is going to hit. Strength six on that crack grenade versus Tito's toughness of three. Two is required to wound. That is going to do a wound. AP2 cuts through his mesh armor and two injury dice come out. He goes down with a serious injury and receives a flesh wound. Chip is going to get to his feet and he is going to use his second action to move. He has just got one flesh wound remaining before he bleeds out. Up top, Decker is going to attempt to reload his weapon. That is going to fail. He attempts to reload again and it fails again. His weapon is just jammed. We then got Forge, the Arms Master, moving to the bottom of the stairs, and on the next move, he will be able to reach Talos with that Arc Hammer. Dusty is going to use a Crawl Maneuver to get closer to Big John, getting that assist in the end phase. That brings us to the end of the turn, and what a swing of events as the Enforcers ended up bottling, lost their captain, and lost one of their officers. House of Iron remaining cool with the Rule of Iron, and we're going to move into the end phase. Bottle check for House Orlock. On that three, it essentially becomes a one with the Rule of Iron. They are just fine. Rolling up a recovery for Dusty, and he goes double out of action. So the assist from Big John not working. It's a 31. That will be Grievous. We then roll up for Reb, and he goes out of action as well. So House Orlock getting extremely unlucky on their uh, injury or their recovery rolls. And it looks like that's going to be a 14, which is out cold. Rolling up for the Arms Master Juice, he is going to roll back over with a Flesh Wound. We also have Tito, who will receive an additional Flesh Wound, but he does roll back over, becoming pinned. And with all this being done, the Enforcers are going to decide to voluntarily flee the battlefield. They have lost two fighters in this one, but depending if they can win the priority or not, if they lose then Forge is going to be able to come up with that big arc hammer swinging at Talos and more than likely take him out of action. With House Orlock barely clinging on and with numerous fighters out of action, it's just better to play it safe when there's a long campaign forward. So what an incredible swingy game we just played. We've got the post-game report coming up next. Alright, hope you enjoyed that matchup between House Orlock and the Enforcers, and despite the Enforcers having a chance to win that game, just not in the cards to stick around any longer, knowing that you're going to lose one of your sergeants. Even if the Enforcers had one priority in order to turn and shoot at that Arms Master, he would need to take an Iron Stair test, which would require a cool check, in addition to another cool check to just stick around. The Arms Master also has Nerves of Steel, where he can easily pass a cool check of 6 to avoid being pinned, and then charge his way up to the top, taking Talos out of action. In addition, with cool checks being 6s and 7s for the Enforcers, you just never quite know who's going to stick around. One thing is for certain is that their Rule of Iron is pretty powerful, as the Orlock gang, they just didn't break, they came close once, but the Rule of Iron takes two away from your bottle checks. Overall, they had three fighters go down, one was operating on just one wound remaining, or one flesh wound, until he bled out, and they had an Arms Master seriously injured there at the end of the game. That Arms Master Juice was able to successfully recover and make his way off the board. I think overall, both these gangs were pretty evenly matched for the most part. Felt that I did a pretty good job with the Enforcers and those Blast templates really kind of locking down that one flank. Did get unlucky on some of the wound rolls where he made armor saves with the mesh armor, and I had two damage going through that did not convert. I felt like my son did a good job today with House Orlock moving them into the right positions in order to get the win today. The showboating card proved to be pretty deadly, uh, along with Seize the Initiative, as that eliminated two of my fighters. And that essentially allowed an Arms Master behind the lines to where he could really start to wreak havoc on my forces back there that were sticking around. While I think Talos played an excellent game for the Enforcers, the man of the match always goes to the winner. And for this one, we are going to give it to the Arms Master Forge, 
for taking down Boomer, playing the showboating card, getting into hand-to-hand -hand combat, and taking down Dragnet as well. Two fighters on the same turn hit the deck. House Orlock will receive one reputation for their victory today and 50 credits, and the Enforcers will receive 25 credits. I really hope that you have enjoyed this battle report. This was a ton of fun to play with the way that the game was swinging back and forth. I actually thought that I had it, and then my forces ran, and House Orlock just kind of stuck around. As always, I would like to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you to the 2022 Coffee Supporters Club. Your names are on the screen now. If you'd like any more information on that, a link will be down in the description. Quite frankly, if you've watched this far, you've done more than enough to support my channel. Drop a like, whatever you want to do to support us. It's all good. There's always more Necromunda on the horizon. Appreciate you watching. We will see you in the next one. Take care.